So mostly what they do is hold summits. I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets. Fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Well, of course we are, because if we look at the economic data, there's nothing to get excited about in that. So we, you know, yesterday we saw some reluctance for the Bernanke Fed to expand their balance sheets and pump more money in. But the stock market knows that reluctance is, is totally different than not willing to do it at all. And that's why we saw oil and oil implode and gold trade off heavily because they're not a protected class. If the stock market starts trading off in the 10 to 15 to 20 percent area, the chairman's going to come in and throw some stimulus at it. So to answer your question, we are absolutely slaves to central banks because and we'd love to be slaves to the economy but the economic numbers continue to do nothing but trend lower mr lecamp do we work for the no, central bank we know that mr lecamp we do, do. We this is a free we do uh, look markets are driven by policy now they're not driven by market forces they're right. driven by uh fiscal cliffs they're driven by central bank proclamations they're driven by false rumors coming out of the ECB. Fiat currency they really that's, that's continually watered investors. down they continue to water our currency Absolutely. down so the markets go but up and we feel good about it yeah, and listen to what the Fed did this weekend. I think they really screwed up here. They said that we're going to do this Operation Twist through the end of the year. In other words, they're going to create uncertainty about what happens after Operation Twist right at the same time that the fiscal cliff kicks in. Do we really want all Jim, that uncertainty? Jim, at the we, same have, time? we have to give we the Fed a break here because the Fed realizes that what they're doing is probably going to have very little economic effect. The only real thing that can help is fiscal and policy changes. So the Fed, right. it, all they have is rocks and stones left. They're just going to throw them. They know that they're probably not going to do any good as well. Gentlemen, Jim and Jim. Isn't, Tyler, that, we, isn't we, that why we, we know that there's going to be QE3? Isn't yep. that why we know there ultimately will be QE3? That's because what I'm banking on. Can't I love what you said there, Jim LeCamp, spending. about the idea so that... Ultimately, there will be. Uh, well, Jim LeCamp, I go, which Jim? I'm not sure which one said this, but that we're, we're <laughs> basically uh, beholden to what the central bankers and policymakers do right. rather than Absolutely. To the fundamentals in the economy because we have not been able to generate real, real growth without doing one of two things things. That is debasing the currency or borrowing our way to a false prosperity. Uh, Jimmy, well, Mario, how do you right. invest the, under those circumstances? What, what's the question there, Ty? How, how do, do you invest, invest under those do circumstances? Oh, we invest because remember that every central bank in the world, not just us, ultimately has to devalue their currency. So you can't keep, you, you got to put your money in stuff. I, big cap U.S. with good balance sheets, to me, is the world's tallest M M midget. Mr. LeCamp, every major country holds gold. Uh, that tells me that it's attractive. Is it attractive I, to I you with a, a watered-down currency? A I, I think it's very attractive, both as a currency and a store of value. I agree with Jim. Ultimately, you're going to want resources, but volatility is going to stay with us. So I think investors need to get used to trimming what they don't like and having their portfolio on rallies and nibbling at what they do like on sell-offs because these aren't going away. Mm -hmm. the only the only good news here is that free markets will fight back. When we see bond riots in Spain and bond riots in Italy, those are free market forces fighting back and ultimately they'll win because investors ultimately will walk away. I think I heard him say he likes gold. Tom. He, d he yeah, did say yeah, that. He likes, yes, yeah. I did. Jim and Jim, the two Jims, thank you very much. And John, interesting, I was at a conference this week and one of the most persuasive investors I talked to there said that he felt that what you have to do right now is buy things that are scarce. He said gold was right, scarce. Right, right. Uh, aggregates are scarce.